title of today's speech. It also is an area that has laid on me for many years. The man I'm telling you about is my father. He was Air Force. He was Army. But moreover, he was my watcher through all my many years. He was the only guy I know that could eat cookies nonstop and never gain a pan. <laughs> So what does this guy look like? You're right! That's Wait a minute. <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> However, this is probably the image you have in your head at this time. This is not what he looked like. Plus, before you get to see what he looks like, let me tell a small story. This story begins when I'm three years old. My brother, had an older brother that was three years older than I was, and I were getting into some mischief. And our father called us, said, Mark, Matthew, come here. We ignored him. You know, three and five year old children, they tend to do that from time to time. As many of y'all have kids, you know this. As many of y'all were kids, you did this. <laughs> so we get called. Come here. We ignored him. The second time, it wasn't so nice. He comes stomping out there, and you can look on the look on his face. Get in the house! Oh, so we go running, quick as we can. We get to the house, and he says, "Okay, since y'all aren't willing to listen, you're gonna have to go cut your own hickory switch." We had a hickory tree right out behind the house. Now, now keep in mind, this was back in the 80s when some of this was some, <laughs> somewhat legal. <laughs> so we got sent out to the hickory tree to pick up our own hickory switch. My brother out there, he thought it'd be hilarious. He talked me into pulling a branch about that big around and for dad to hit me with. Where he thought it'd be funny, he'd get the smallest lady he could find. We get back to the house, and I'm holding this branch, and my dad knew exactly what happened. So he says, okay, no problem. He took my branch and Mark's little switch, and he whipped me with the little switch, just barely tapping twice, and he whipped Mark with the branch. This is a memory I'll never forget. Two reasons. First one, because since I was listening to my brother picking out the switch, he didn't punish me for something I had no knowledge of. But moreover, the second reason is because my brother got me in more trouble and he received the worst punishment. There you go. So I would never forget from then on, don't get others in trouble, as that will cause you more punishment. So now to the picture. Y'all are imagining some mean looking fellow, and this may be true. For those of y'all that can see it, that's my college graduation. Probably the proudest moment in that guy's life. And the reason wasn't because I was graduating college. It was because you could hear that vacuum sucking noise that I was going, Daddy, more money! Daddy, more money! Stop! <laughs> Given that was the first time I graduated college, um, we have really grown close. Me and my father talked on the phone every day, sometimes 10 and 12 times a day. But you imagine, I graduated 15 years ago. That's what he looked like 15 years ago. As you move forward, here's five years ago. Looks about the same, doesn't it? Very few people can distinguish 15 years from five years ago. In my mind, I thought he would never get older. I thought he would live forever. I thought I never had to worry about age 
sitting in on my deck. Of course, as many of us, we don't consider our parents getting older. And the longer and longer we don't consider this, the more and more you turn around and look, and it hits you all at once. You look, and all of a sudden they got gray hair, gray mustache, gray beard, gray earrings for some of the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you look and you don't understand that time is taking a toll but then you also start looking in the mirror and you see the gray in your, your own mustache going, oh my god <laughs> and anyone that says they haven't done that means you're not old enough yet <laughs> well Another time that I can really remember, Hurricane Hugo. Many of y'all remember this time as it was a real dramatic time around here. I'm a very heavy sleeper. A tree in front of our house broke and hit my window. I slept right till it never heard the tree. I was still laying in bed. There was tree right through the middle of my room and I'm still asleep. Rain's coming in on top of me. <laughs> I stayed on the second floor of this room, uh, of this house. So Dad was worried automatically about the foundation giving loose, about the, the rest of the building falling. And, you know, normal worries for a homeowner that sees a tree that's about that big ground fall in the middle of the house. But his main concern wasn't the tree. It was his child that was laying in the bed asleep where the tree had hit. He comes running into the room, jumps over the tree. He's screaming from the top of his lungs. Matthew, Matthew, and I wake up. I'm like, what happened? I look and I see a tree in the middle of my room. I'm like, <laughs> didn't plant that. <laughs> he just insured, wanted to ensure that I was okay. He picked me up, rushed me out of the room, down the hall and downstairs to save me. This man I'd never seen cry until 1988. Four weeks I was in the hospital. They didn't know what was wrong with me. Nobody could tell me a thing. The doctor came in and finally had diagnosed it. I was type 1 diabetic. He then explained to my parents that for the rest of my life I'm going to have to take shots. At that time I was on three shots a day. First year I ever seen a man shed. But I can say, 30 years later, which was a couple weeks ago, I decided to go on a fishing trip. And does that face not just look to be the proudest face you've ever seen? In that, I challenge each and every one of you. You don't realize how much of a hero you are to your children or to your parents. I challenge each of you. Give your kids a hug. Tell them how proud you are of them. Tell your parents how much you love them, how much they have done for you. And moreover, keep that peace with each other. As if you want to make this world a better place, you have to start here in your shop. Mr. Postmaster.